Thank you for joining us back for part two of the Installing and Configuring Windows Server 2016 video series. Today we're going to look at sysprepping our VMs that we created yesterday. The first thing you'll want to do is turn on your VMs, FS02, FS01, DC1, and finally master because we're going to sysprep it a little bit differently. Just in case we do want to make a clone of it again, we can do it quicker. After your VMs have started, go ahead and log into each of them. Once your VMs have finally started, go ahead and open up File Explorer on each one. Once File Explorer is open, navigate to C, Windows, System32, SysPrep. And open the SysPrep application within this folder. Do this on each VM that we've created. On the SysPrep application, for the master, we want to click Generalize and Shut Down. On the other three VMs we have created, you want to Generalize and Reboot. What this process is going to do is change the system identifier of each VM. On the master, we told it to shut down because in the future, if we want to create another VM from this clone, it'll already be sysprepped when we boot it up. So the system ID actually changes when the system is booted for the first time after sysprep has performed its magic. So this will take just a few minutes for sysprep to run. SysPrep is used frequently if you're using the same image on multiple computers. You'll see this oftentimes in a Windows uh, deployment system, which is also one of the features of Windows Server 2016 that we'll cover later in this video series.
Our master image has completed the sysprep configuration. DC1 and file system servers are both in the process of rebooting currently. Just for a little bit more information about the sysprep tool, there's a couple parameters you can use. Audit mode, it enables the computer to start in what's called audit mode. And instead of the Windows welcome mode, which is what you see on your screen now, where it's almost like we're setting up Windows for the first time. Audit mode, it's also referred to as reseal mode. Audit mode, you can add additional drivers, applications, and test your images before capturing it. And you would usually use the Windows deployment um, server to capture your image using a pixie boot or uh, there's a couple other options with that that we'll cover later. You can also set up an answer file to answer all the questions when you would start Windows for the first time. The generalized parameter it prepares the image for installation by removing all unique system information such as the computer name, logs, restore points, and hardware specific information. You must run this option if you intend to transfer the image to a different computer. When setup starts at the next reboot after the generalized pass, the specialized pass of the installation will occur. That's what we're seeing now on our screen. Unless the system is configured to boot into audit mode, this is what happens by default. If you're using an answer file, you'll have to use the Microsoft Windows deployment slash generalize option. The out of box experience or OOBE, uh, it allows the user to customize their system, such as creating accounts and setting the computer name. Many of the steps can be automated using the answer file. When using an answer file, you must use the Microsoft Windows deployment slash reseal slash mode equals OOBE option. And then finally, you have the reboot and shutdown parameters, which we already covered. Reboot is if you want it to run generalize on the next reboot immediately or shut down as we saw with our master image we don't necessarily want it to create a new SID until we turn on the machine and that's good because we will be copying the master image to another VM and then turning them on individually when we do so it'll generate a new SID that's unique to each of those machines so we're almost finished here and we'll be ready to log back in While we're waiting on DC1, let's go ahead and check out the others where they're at in the process. So it looks like uh, FS01 is already at the setup. And you'll just want to follow the defaults on here, accept the license terms. You'll want to enter a unique password for your administrator account. And I would suggest using the same password on all these VMs for now. In the next video, we're going to be setting up our Active Directory infrastructure. So the administrator you, password you put on the DC, that's going to be your default domain administrator password. Okay, and FS02 has finished. Yours probably won't complete in the same order that mine did. That's okay. We just want to make sure we're at the same step on each of these machines. And again, you'll have to accept the software terms.
And finally the DC1 has finished. I know this video and the previous one wasn't too exciting, but we're going to get into the deep technical things here in the next couple of videos and hopefully you'll get some good information from them. All right, so let's go ahead and log on to our uh, FS servers. While we're waiting on FS02 to boot, let's go ahead and log in to the other VMs. In case you didn't know, you can press Control Alt Insert on your keyboard as a shortcut for Control Alt Delete in the virtual machine. In case you see the network uh, dialog box over here on the right, go ahead and click Yes on that message. Okay, the next thing we need to do is statically assign an IP address on these VMs. Before we do that, I'm probably going to end this video and do another video dedicated just to the vSwitch setup within VMware Workstation. And we're also going to do a video on setting up PFSense, which is a uh, Linux-based firewall appliance. That way we can isolate this lab from your entire network. So take a chance now to look at your IP address range on your machine. If you're on a home network, you've probably got a 192.168.something address. I would suggest setting up a class B network, such as a 172.16.0 address. That way you're not overlapping. You can follow along in the video series. Just make sure that you understand what IP address you're assigning to what VM and that your subnets are not overlapping. So I would suggest using a 172.16.0.1 to .254 and our router could be 172.16.0.1, DC1 is 0 0.2, DC2 is 0 0.3, file server, file server, and then that would be your subnet mask. So I'm going to stop this video and we're going to do another video for PFSense, which will be our router, and also setting up the virtual switch within VMware.